Welcome to the podcast. The title of today's podcast is Short Stature Conditions, Including Severe Primary IGF-1 Deficiency, a Patient Case Discussion. My name is Dr. Andrew Dauber. Today, we're going to focus on some patient cases in real clinical practice, focusing on the area of severe primary IGF-1 deficiency. We're not going to really discuss the workup of patients with growth hormone deficiency today, but rather we're going to focus on other patients where the IGF-1 levels are low, but the growth hormone levels are actually high. And this might point you to a case of primary IGF-1 deficiency. So now I'm going to introduce you to my uh, co-host today, Dr. Marta Ramon. Today, uh, we're very happy to present uh, this podcast, which we're going to do in a practical manner with clinical cases, discussing about severe primary IGF-1 deficiency, which is rare condition that as pediatric endocrinologists we might not see very often, but it's important that in our practice we are able to make the appropriate diagnosis. So now uh, I know, Marta, that you had recently you had a patient with a classic presentation. I'd love to hear more about that uh, patient's case. This is the case, as you shared, about the form of severe primary IG-1 deficiency. And so this is a, a girl when she presented to the clinic, she was only two and a half years old, and she presented with very severe short stature. At this point, no, we have a girl with very no, severe short stature. We have that started very early in life no, and with hypoglycemia, consanguinity in the family, undetectable IGF-1 levels, but different from Growth hormone deficiency, growth hormone levels were high, which was not what we expect. No? And I also want to uh, highlight something that you said is you looked at other causes, other you know chronic illnesses, whether they could be leading to a secondary IGF deficiency. You know, could she have had liver failure or some other inflammatory disease? But no, she otherwise was healthy pointing to the fact that this was severe primary IGF-1 deficiency, right? She had the spontaneous hypoglycemia, the mid-face hypoplasia, the frontal bossing. Uh, sometimes these patients have high-pitched voices often. I would guess at some point this patient probably had some genetic testing done. But this is classic to have a biallelic recessive mutations in the growth hormone receptor as the primary cause of Lerone syndrome, which is a form of severe primary IGF-1 deficiency. Great. So you've made the diagnosis. You have the patient there. Um, you know, how did you treat this patient? As you know, these patients, they do not respond well to growth hormone, especially when they have this VLLIC mutation that is definitely a huge resistance on growth hormone. And so we decided to start treatment with recombinant IGF-1, mecasermine, because uh, that's what uh, would be the treatment of choice in this in this case. However, you know what, uh, one of the concerns is that uh, when you start, patients can have hypoglycemia, especially these Larons patients. We are very interested in this uh, uh, registries long term. It's because, as you know, IGF-1 promotes growth, and our concern is that it could promote no growth of malignancies. So how did your patient respond to treatment? She she responded well. Uh, she During the first year, she, incre she increased her height SDS by 0 0.6, and then by the following year, by 0 0.4 more. And Marta, as you were saying, in the registries, there are patients with documented genetic mutations causing Lerone syndrome, but then there are other genetic causes or under, you know, undiagnosed causes of severe primary IGF-1 deficiency. Marta, any key points that you wanna make sure we highlight about severe primary IGF-1 deficiency before we close? We pointed out everything, but I think it's important that uh, at least uh, there is awareness. And so low IGF-1 with no other secondary cause, low BP3, normal growth hormone, we should definitely think about severe primary IGF-1 deficiency. And then if we can know more, the more pathophysiology we know, the better we'll be at Diagnosing early, but also like to start like getting better treatments, no more targeted treatments. I think, I think that's the future no? of endocrinology. There's still a lot of rare forms of short stature that we should be uh, doing something better. I totally agree. And I think what's so important with identifying this disorder is that growth hormone treatment will not work, as you said. This is not growth hormone deficiency, right? There's sufficient growth hormone and resistance to growth hormone. So making this diagnosis early, starting on appropriate therapy with recombinant IGF-1 
early can really have a, a tremendous impact on you know these patients' long-term growth and health. So I think with that, I'm just going to thank our audience for listening. We hope you enjoyed the podcast.